Well, I never expected him to meet us with the brass band anyway. I can't blame anybody for staying inside in this kind of heat. Let's get them supplies. I could do with a little siesta myself, too. Don't seem to be anybody around here, does it? Let's try the saloon. That's the best thing you said today. <laughs> Come on. I left to hurry. Yeah, look at this. Look at that. Anybody here? Five thirty. This place ought to be packed. <laughs> Looks like there'd be at least one horse tied up to all these hit racks, don't it? Place is like a ghost town. We'll see. Coop, a town just don't get up and move out halfway through a plate of ham and eggs, does it? This town did, Charlie. What do you think it was, Coop Indians? No. There'd be signs of a fight or something. Well, it's too late to get back to the wagon train tonight. And we need the supplies, too. We'll just have to stay overnight. Let's water the horses. I'd feel a lot better if I knew what happened to all the people around here. Don't like the idea of some Indian scalping me in my sleep. I got a lot to lose, you know. There's no Indians around here, Charlotte. They hadn't been for over 30 years. Well, I hope you're right. That's perfect.
That's for you. Is anybody out there? No, not a soul. Every man, woman, and child's gone. Seems like they left right in the middle of everything. Like they were scared away, maybe. Scared away, huh? You have any idea who scared them? No, I don't. Do you find any food around here? There must be a kitchen in the back. I looked in the kitchen upstairs, too. Not a bit of food around here, not a bit. Well, there's some beans in a wagon across the street. Go get them. Don't you think it's too hot to eat, Coop? Uh, it's not too bad, Charlie. You'll be comfortable in a half an hour or so. I did not to talk to you about this. You get a little flabby around the waist. It's starchy food, that's what it is. Too much starch. Charlie, I'm hungry. Now go get those beans. Coop, you wouldn't like those old cold beans. They're mushy and messy and everything else. Hey, how about the ham and eggs that fella left? They're clean. <laughs> I'll get you some ketchup. Charlie! Yeah? You're not trying to tell me you're afraid to go outside in the dark, are you? Afraid? Who's afraid? No, there's nothing out there. There's nothing. I know that. Nothing to be afraid of at all. Nothing at all. Then get going. I know that. I saw the lights. My name is Isaiah Quick Fox. I live here. Uh, out there. You're not fooling us, Annie. You probably got a whole war party hidden behind these buildings. No, nobody's here. Only us. Where is everybody? They went to another town, 20 miles away. How come? They're afraid. Afraid of what? <laughs> Hurry it up, we ain't got much time. Mr. Anders! Mr. Anders, you can't just leave them out there to die. You can't be that inhuman. We've done all we can for today. But it's my father and Eric. They were told, they were warned not to go. It's their own fault. It's getting late, you haven't got much time. Isaiah, we've, we've got to do something. You've got to bring these men and come with me. No, Miss Kate, not in the night. But I... It is not safe. But I can't leave my father out there. He'll die. Please help me find them. You live here. You know these hills. No, not us, ma'am. We just rode in. That's right. We're strangers. Eric will find him. Eric will take care of him. It's them. They've come back. I couldn't find him. He's still in the cave. Oh! Kate, no! Please! Please, let me go! There's suicide out there! Please! Please, let now, me Kate, go! listen to me. Now, let's go inside. Come on. I'll see to the horses. Here. Sit over here. You're strangers in town. Uh, we're from a wagon train about 10 miles north. We rode in for supplies today, found the place deserted. I'm Eric Camden. I'm the school teacher here. I'm Cooper Smith. This here's Charlie Wooster. Hi, teacher. What's all this about her father? Last week, uh, Professor Sheffield and Kate came to town. This morning, the professor and I went into the hills, into the caves there. He got lost. I came back for help and...
footsteps. Listen. They're coming. Sounds like bats. Flying bats. There's millions of them attacking the town. What do you mean attacking? Blood. They feed on blood. What do you know about these bats, Eric? Has this ever happened before? Not that anybody can remember. It all started two nights ago. Well, why all of a sudden? Well, Professor Sheffield and Kate arrived in town last week. He's a historian from a college in New England. What's he doing here? He's trying to track down something he found in an old letter. The Spaniards came into this territory a long time ago. They're probably searching for gold. The professor thinks they were carrying some kind of a treasure with them anyway. According to this letter, it's the greatest treasure in the Western world. Anyway, when he and Kate came to town, they came over to the school and I introduced them to Isaiah. He and the professor got along pretty good and he confirmed the professor's theory. And there were Spaniards here? Yes. Isaiah remembers stories his father told him. The Spanish did come. Some of them were very sick. They took refuge in some caves. Well, there was a landslide and they were sealed in forever. Day before yesterday, Isaiah took us to where his father said the entrance was. We dynamited it and... Well, that night, those demons swarmed down upon the town. Well, didn't Isaiah know about the bats? He figured that sealed up for so long in there, they died. That night, he ran all through the streets, shouting, telling the people about the bats, that they fed on blood. Well, nobody believed him, but after that first night... Well, it was pretty horrible. It was worse than last night, even. I don't blame anybody for leaving. And knowing about the bats, the professor still went into the cave? Yes, and I went with him yesterday afternoon. He said there was nothing to fear from them in the daylight, that they slept while it was light. He told me to stay outside the cave and collect some rock samples for him. Later on, when he didn't come out, I went in looking for him. I couldn't find him, so I came back here for help. Bert Enders and Cy Fawcett had come back to the store for some food. When I told them what happened, they rode out that way with me. But halfway there, they realized they wouldn't make it back by night if they continued, so they came back. You saw for yourself how frightened they were last night. Eric, help! <laughs> What happened, Isaiah? He told me to get out of town. You two, Miss Kate, all of us. Mr. Anders? Mr. Anders, Isaiah tells me you want us to leave town. That would be better for all concerned, Miss. But my father's lost in a cave back in those hills, and I have to find him. Then go find him. I need your help. For what? To save somebody who's done this to my town? He didn't know. But he knew. He knew all along what was in that cave. And he used your father to help blow it open, knowing what would happen to us. He's been waiting all these years to get his revenge. Revenge? Revenge for what? Revenge against me. Because I got here when there was nothing but engines, his kind, all over. Red devils would sooner put an arrow through you, your women folk, your children, as they would to eat and drink. But they didn't scare me off. I stood my ground. Now those early men, they turned and ran, but not me. I fought back. I cleaned this place out. I made it a decent place for people to move in and settle down. That's what he wants to get back at me for. 
I made it a fit place for white folk to live in. If this was a decent town with decent men in it, you'd help me find my father. For why? He's dead now, anyway. Maybe not, mister. From what Eric tells me, you never went in those caves yesterday. So how do you know there's not a chance he's still alive? In that cave with those vampires? What do you know about that cave? Maybe there's a place the professor could have hidden. Believe me, he's dead. You know, you seem awful eager to think that. Why? You wouldn't be scared to go in there, would you? I ain't afraid of anything. Good. Then you'll go with us. Ah, wait a minute. You may be fool enough to go in there for no reason, but not me. And uh, he ain't either. Let him answer. I'll go. Oh, sure, sure. I'll bet he'll go. He'll lead you in there. And he'll run off and leave you to the bats. That's a chance we're going to have to take. Glad to hear there's at least one man in this town. Let's go, Isaiah. Bert. That fellow's right. You listen to me, you don't pay him to mind. Everybody in this town's always listened to you, Burke. Only this time it... Well, it just don't seem human leaving that man up there. Now, I, I ain't never gone against your advice before, Burke, but... Oh, well... All right. All right, I can't talk any sense into you, so... I guess I will come along. But for one reason only. Keep my eye on that engine. Hold up, John. What are we stopping here for? We're almost there. We're gonna stay here till it's dark. The bats will leave the cave. It'll be safer then. And we're gonna wait out here when they come out. Listen, he went into the cave. In the daylight, that's when them critters sleep. I say we go in now. It makes no difference. There's no daylight in the cave. It's always night in there. Eric was in the cave. Tell them, Eric. Well, tell them. I didn't go in after your father. I stopped just inside the entrance of the cave. Those things were flying all around. I... I couldn't see them, but I could feel them brushing close to my cheek. I turned and ran. You mean you just abandoned him? Yes. I might have known. I misjudged you, Mr. Camden. I won't ask you to continue with us. Charlie. Get some wood to build a fire with. Yes, sir. The Sheffield. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to stay outside. I'm coming with you. There's nothing you can do to stop me. I'm not afraid, Mr. Smith. Unless we know what fear is, Miss Kate, we can never know what it is to be brave. <laughs> about that cave and them bats. It seems like in the old days, the young boys were brought here by their fathers and put in the cave overnight. The next day when they came out, if they did come out, they were accepted as men. It was an ordeal all the boys had to go through. Bats ain't nothing but just little old flying things anyway. <laughs> I'd be afraid of them. All right, Anders, light the fire. Here they come.
thought you said they'd all be out of the cave. Keep your voice down. I say I said they'd be out. You believed him? The torch will protect you. Hey, they're supposed to be blind. Yes. Well, how can they see to attack us? The smell of blood. Blood. <laughs> Step on any loose rocks. How much of a drop is it? Nobody knows. Nobody's ever gone down there and come back. Who asked you? Shut up, Charlie. Not a remark like that out of you, and I'll break you into. I'm sure your father's all right. Watch your step, miss. Your cell to that rocket's a long ways down there. man or a coward.
You all right, Bert? Of course I'm all right. We better rest here for a while. Don't you think you ought to go back? Charlie can take you. No. You're completely exhausted. We'll find your father. I love my father, Mr. Camden. Where there is love, there is no fear. Yeah, well, sometimes where there's love, you can reveal your own weakness, knowing that even if you're not forgiven, maybe you might be understood. I never met a brave man that didn't own up to being scared once in a while. Only a fool claims to be brave all the time, you know. <laughs> or a liar.
Sit over here. You all right, Nancy? Yes. How much farther do you think? I don't know, Eric. Most of my life keeping an eye on Mr. Enders, and he has watched me every day for years. Has he ever tried to do anything to you? No, not yet. He watches me like the child watching the darkness for a ghost. You cannot harm a ghost. You can only sit in the darkness and wait for it to come to you. Uh, excuse me. Where are we out here? This is the place where most of the bats are found. It is a big cavern. My people used to call it the Cave of the Spirits. For here is where the young boys were brought and left. Those who were weak died, but those who would be men lived. The braves came for them the next morning and called them worthy and called them men and called them brothers. What did they do here? They just sat in silence all night. And in the silence, the spirits came to them, to meet them. Oh, what spirits? The spirits that live in the silence each man carries within himself. There's a meeting no man can avoid, if he is to become a man. Where do we go from here, Isaiah? I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? Beyond here, I know nothing. There is only darkness and the unknown. Are you saying we're lost? He didn't say that. What does it take to get you to see what he's doing? He led us here on purpose. We're lost, he doesn't. You turn your back on him. He'll sneak away and leave us. What are you getting at, Anders? I say we turn back. No, we can't do that. I told you from the start, your father's dead. Now, what's the point of going on? We've got to. It don't make no sense. Putting these men's lives in danger, and for what? Well, we don't know if the professor's dead or not. I think... Who cares what you think? Then? I care. Go on, Eric. What do you think? I think that if there's any chance that he's alive, we go on. No, for it not. That's up to him to decide. I decide for my people. I know what's best for them. It's always been that way, hasn't it? You always know what's best for everybody. Why don't you let Fawcett speak his own mind just once? All right. He owns all the land. He owns the water. He owns the clothes you wear and most of the food you eat. But that doesn't mean he owns you, too. Not your mind. Not your soul. Why don't you shut your mouth? What kind of a man is it who owns you, anyway? Him? Why, he's nothing but a... He's nothing but... Oh. You two got something to settle you. Wait till we get outside. All right, you were asked a question. You going back with him or you going on with us? I'm coming with you. All right, we're moving. You can go back or you can go with us. Or you can stay here and rot. Let's get going. I say I want... Isaiah? Isaiah! Isaiah! He's gone. I told you when you wouldn't listen to me. You stuck up for him. But now he's gone. What are you going to do? Tell me. Well, tell all of us. What are you going to do? I told you from the start that you could trust him. But you wouldn't believe me. No, I told you. That all he wanted was revenge. And now he's got a new help. Give it to him. Now he's going to kill all of us. He's going to destroy us. Hear me? He's going to destroy all of us. Hi. 
I had such a funny notion a moment ago. What? That we were those Indian children, left alone here. All around us in the dark, the Indian man watching. Waiting to call us worthy? How much longer are we going to wait? Until Isaiah gets back. He won't come back. Anyway, not alone. He's going after him. When he comes back, he's going to bring him with him. What are you talking about? Them. The whole tribe of them. You better get a hold of yourself, Harris. No, Sit down. no, no. We've got to do something. We've got to get ready for them when they come back. Now, listen to me, all of you. When they come back... Anders! They say he isn't coming back with anybody. His people. Nobody! Now, snap out of it! Did you ever have something from the past come out to meet you? Like what? Nothing. It's just a memory. I guess it's nothing. I'm all right. Something that I say is, is beginning to make sense now. What's that? Something about a man having to face himself and then going mad. The spirit that lives in the silence that each man carries within him. What's that? Must be daylight outside. The bats are coming back from town. They won't come in here, will they? I don't know. people to make our peace with you, Bert Enders. Don't you believe him? Listen, hear that? Hundreds of them, they're all around us. We are not many, and we come in peace. I speak for my people. Don't you believe him? If we hold him, the others will come in the compound. Masters, you take Patterson, Elliot, and Smith and get up in the ledge and cover them as they come in. When the last one comes in, I'll give you the signal. weapons. We came in peace. But when you 
found out you had to hide it. You had to silence even our women, our children, to bury forever your secret. We had come to you without arms, as friends. It is morning now. We had better leave. But what about my father? I'll lead you to him. I know where he is. It'll only take about another hour. You knew where he was. You knew all the time. I have always known the way. Okay, don't fret. I'm perfectly all right. I know. I know. Isaiah, Mr. Enders, I'm glad to see you. Oh, Father, this is Mr. Worcester and Mr. Smith. Without their help and Isaiah, we never would have found you. Thank you, gentlemen. What happened to you? I had a little accident. I may have broken my ankle. I can't walk. I really thought you'd come in for me, Eric. What took you so long? Well, you see, sir, I... Uh, Father. He did come looking for you. He looked everywhere for hours. But when he couldn't find you, he came to town for help. Thank you, Eric. And see here. I was right. I found what I was looking for. Priest did come. They hid here. They died here. If I could get back to my desk, what a paper I could write. <laughs> but I'm afraid getting me back is going to be rather a back-breaking task for some of you. We'll manage, sir. There is an easy way out there behind the rocks. In the old days, it is where the braves came in the morning for the young boys, and they had left their fears behind them. Charlie, Eric, Silas, let's take a look at it. Sure, sure. Grab one of these, sir. Isaiah, I suppose we'd better leave that here. No, this treasure has been hidden here too long. The town needs it. My people never disturbed it. But I think it should be yours now. Enders, take this treasure for you and your people. It is the greatest gift ever brought into the West. Why, they're books, eh? They're nothing but books. They are Bibles. That was the treasure the priests brought. We can move out now. Coop, I was just thinking, when we get back to that wagon plane and try to explain to Mr. Quist why we were so late with these supplies, I kind of got a feeling he's not going to believe us. <laughs> then we won't tell him. Won't tell him? After all we went through? <laughs> yes, sir, Charlie, I got to admit it. You never did act a bit scared, not at all. Scared? What's to be scared of? That ain't nothing. Just like little mice with wings. <laughs> In fact, I was very fond of them before we left there. <laughs> Here, Charlie. Put, put that away, Coop. Put, put it away. Put it away. A present from Isaiah. Poison. 
put that away. It's harmless, Charlie. Those caves were full of nothing but harmless fruit bats. Fruit bats? You mean we was lied to? We were all taught the same lesson that those Indian kids were. We all learn it the same way. The worst enemy anybody has is fear. When there's no fear, that's when we become a man. Huh. See, watch. <laughs> was a bit scared. Ah, fruit bats, too. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs>